Hey, hey, what's up? So today we're going to be using a 3D model low poly pixel art program called Blockbench in order to make a Game Boy Color 3D model and animation. I don't necessarily think that this is the most complex thing that I've ever made with Blockbench, but I thought that it was a good example to show you guys how you can use simple shapes and simple textures to create something that's pretty interesting and can do a lot with that. I've made other things with Blockbench before. Most of them have been game consoles, but some of them have been characters. And a lot of those animations have been more complex, if not as complex as the one that I'm going to make here with this. So I hope you guys enjoy the process. Uh, we'll revisit you in just a moment whenever we start getting a little bit more specific into the actual making of the Game Boy and adding textures and such. point I've got the base of my Game Boy set up. I'm now going to start adding additional meshes. Meshes are just additional objects. In this case I'm adding a hexagon for the buttons. I know the buttons are perfect circles but keep in mind that this is a low poly animation or object and low poly this means that I'm trying to keep the actual polygons, the amount of polygons, as low as possible. So a hexagon is to me, the lowest representation that works of a circle. I'm sure that I could use things like a pentagon, but I found that laying a texture on a pentagon doesn't seem to work as well as laying it on a hexagon, so I just made it a hexagon instead. So I've added the select and start buttons, and now I'm creating the D-pad part of this. For the D-pad, I just added a mesh, and then I duplicated that mesh after I modified it, and then I rotated it 90 degrees so that it could be the D-pad um, you know, crossing each other like this. So fighting it a little bit, again, I'm not the best at using this program, but I feel like I've gotten pretty good at it, at least to my own satisfaction, over the last several months. So I have the base of it set up. Um, I think that this took me about 15 minutes to make the actual object itself if I was to slow this down to normal speed, which to be honest, kind of surprises me because <laughs> I'm not that good at this. But it was interesting to see it with a timer because I've never filmed myself making something like this. So um, it was exciting for me to see the amount of time that I have, uh, well, I guess the amount that I've, sp that I've sped up in the process of this. So you can see in the video here, I'm adding a game to the back. That game is going to be Pokemon Yellow just because that was the first uh, Game Boy Color game that I ever got. And I also feel like it's one of the more popular ones. At this point, I'm renaming all of my objects so that I understand where and what I am selecting. <laughs> and then I also have put them in groups because it will help me whenever I'm animating later. And now we start getting into what I think is the fun part because it's just pixel art on a 3D surface. When I first started learning how to do this, I should say that this was pretty tedious and annoying because it was different than doing pixel art in a sprite or just doing pixel art in general um, and just understanding how it applies to a 3d surface and how you create depth without lighting because there's not lights in this program to my knowledge so you can't add a light as an object i don't think maybe you can <laughs> and i just don't know how but i've created a texture here just by using the default mapping and you can see in this moment i had this grid that's showing up on my actual object that is the pixels and the pixels that I have to work with. So I'm going to take a break for a second and let you guys see me paint this surface and we'll see how it turns out. Uh, revisit you in a second. Alright, so at this point we've got something that looks a lot like a Game Boy Color, at least the color way that I had whenever I was younger. I think it looks pretty good. All that's left for us to do now is to add a texture to the game cartridge, which I need to find a reference image for that because I don't actually own Pokemon Yellow any longer. 
but I still have this Game Boy, which is cool, and I actually had it beside me whenever I was working on this. So, uh, Game Boy's done, let's move on to the actual cartridge itself. As we start the cartridge, there's one thing that I need to grapple with as I start this. The amount of detail that I need to be able to make this cartridge readably Pokemon Yellow is a lot more than the amount of detail that I needed to make that look like a Game Boy Color. You can see that the amount of squares that I have on my actual object are a lot more this time. It's just a decision that you make whenever you choose the texture for your object you can change the pixel density and in this case i just made it twice as much as the pixel density on the game boy color that we just made and you can see i brought in my reference imagery that's one thing that's nice about these types of programs is that you can bring in a reference and just have it live alongside your actual object but again i'm trying to reduce this down into its simplest version i'm not trying to create an exact copy of it because again this is meant to be low poly and is meant to be pixel art I think that I'm just trying to contribute enough that it's readable and then also not too much that it is just like the actual cartridge. Let's finish this cartridge up and then we can talk about the next part. All right, so putting the final touches on this part of the project here, getting a little screw on the back, and now I've got all our pieces and parts together. That you can see that they're one inside the other. The next thing that I need to do, which I added at the beginning and then swapped around a little bit, is I added a plane, which is just a flat surface, that I'm going to add a texture on, which will be the actual game screen itself. Whenever I do this, though, I want this texture to be animated, and the way that you have to go about this to be able to get this texture animated, at least for me, I have to export the texture <laughs> into a sprite and animate it there, and then update that in Blockbench, and then it will animate the way that I need it to, which I had to find out in a roundabout way how to make this happen. So uh, we're going to see that happen. If you want a detailed explanation about that, find it somewhere else, because I'm not the champ at this. All right, let's do that. All right, so this white block here is the screen texture from Blockbench that I imported into a sprite. I'm using my trusty mirror tool here to cre create this as a lower resolution version of the Game Boy screen, I guess. Uh, just again, using this mirror tool, setting things up. It definitely won't say Pokemon at the end of this, and it definitely won't say Pika at the end of this, but it should be recognizable enough if you've seen the screen at some point in your lifetime and looked at it for as many hours as many of us have. You can see that I just got a screen cap from YouTube and just paused it here and then just creating a simple animation with that. So let's finish the rendering and then we'll talk about the animation and then bringing it back into Blockbench. So here we have it. Like I said, not readable, but recognizable. Now it's time for us to start animating. The animation on this pause screen is nothing super mind boggling. It's just Pikachu blinking. And I think there is some bouncing to it. Uh, maybe I changed some things about it, I don't know. But uh, again, I'm just getting Pikachu blinking, opening and closing those eyes. Nothing super complex if you've done pixel art before. Um, so next, let us finish the animation, export it as a sprite sheet. All right, so in order for this to work the way we need it to work, we need to export it as a sprite sheet, and it needs to be in a vertical strip, and it needs to be in the same dimensions that it was whenever we exported it from Blockbench to import it into a sprite. And now we're going to import it back into Blockbench, and hopefully it'll animate the way we want it to. All right, so cool. There we go. See? <laughs> the texture's animating just the way we want it to, which I think is pretty cool. I like to add these animated textures on stuff. It's just a fun way to add some additional interest to it. Looks cool. The next thing for us to do is to do the long-winded part and animate this whole thing, which is fun, but uh, I think more complex than pixel art, if I'm being honest. At least for me. All right, so as we start the animation part of this, this is actual animation timeline within the Blockbench program. Um, the reason why that this is different and more complex to me is because it uses keyframes instead of frame by frame animation, which to be honest, to do more complex animations, it's probably simpler. Uh, but what you're having to do is move it to the position that you want it to be in. And then once it's in that position at whatever time on the timeline, then it will automatically fill in the space between each of those individual keyframes that you've created, which it probably melts your brain just as much as it melts mine by hearing me say that. But you also have to make sure that your objects are grouped appropriately so that you can animate it and move it the way that you want it to because each group is a specific 
bone, <laughs> which this means that it's an object that you can move as a whole. And if they're not grouped together in a certain way, then you can't move them the way you need to. I could make you guys listen to me talk about this forever, and I could make you watch me do this forever, but I'll just give you little slices and bits of this because I can promise you that it's not that interesting to watch this process. Uh, maybe you think it is, but I know there's other people who have, do a better job of explaining this than me. And I'll show you in the space below the video some of the channels that I look at to help me solve problems if I need help solving them. All right, we're going to zoom through this and then we can talk about the After Effects stuff with this. All right, so boom, there we have it. Uh, the animation's all set up. I honestly think it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, it took quite a while to kind of get it the way that I want with the turnaround. I just had the axes crossed or something but anyway it's done now the next thing we need to do is send this out as a gif and i'm going to show you guys with a drop down menu in just a second how we're going to get that exported so that we can share it all over the internet so i'm going to record gif gif i want to make sure that the length is the length of the actual animation that is made um i just make my frames per second 25 uh, just because it helps me when i import it into a sprite the resolution 500 by 500 because it's just a nice square and then we're going to click play animation and confirm this little box here is just showing me what my animation is going to look like whenever it's exported so i'm kind of like moving pieces and parts around trying to make sure it's in the right spot it's at a good angle everything fits in there okay um, it can be a bit frustrating just because of the way that i've animated things sometimes it goes outside the frame a little bit and i'm stuck having to do a little bit of additional maneuvering or getting it from a camera angle that i don't necessarily like but regardless i want to get a good angle and then i'm going to hit that record button and then it should write that as a gif and i could put it in a sprite again <laughs> All right, and so it's writing it, and there it is with a transparent background. You can do some background stuff in Blockbench with this, but I prefer not to do that. So I'm going to take this and back to a sprite. So with that exported as a GIF, it now has it written as frames, which will allow me to be able to modify the individual frames. Notice that whenever I put this in, it's like really slow. It's just because of the frame rate of things by default whenever you put it into a sprite so i need to change the properties of the actual frame rate because right now it's 10 frames per second i think 100 milliseconds and i made it 25 frames per second which means that i just i know that 25 goes into 100 four times and i'm just gonna make that 40 frames per second instead of 10 so it should make everything a lot smoother and a lot like it was whenever it was in block bench and now i can start adding in background elements so as we start to add our background elements it's just essentially me adding in new layers figuring out what color i like for the background do i want to have something else in the background do i want to have a checkerboard in the background i need to put in my signature i need to make it look presentable because i don't want it just to be the transparent background i think that it's nice if you're sharing that like via a text message or something or using it as like a notification on twitch or whatever if you just have it with a transparent background but for me i want to present this and package it up so that i can share it on social media platforms so um, let's do those little parts and then show you the final animation <laughs> And there you have it. There's the final animation. Um, I think it turned out pretty great. I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. This is like my 10th or something animation. Um, maybe I can make a video where I go through some of my previous 3D stuff and just show you what I learned from those. Speaking of learning from previous things, don't forget I'm going to share some of the tutorials that helped me in the process. There's some really great ones that I just kind of followed along with that really taught me a lot really quickly in a really simple way that I think that might benefit you if you're interested in learning how to do this. Um, let me know what you thought about the whole process. Did you enjoy it? Did you feel like I did a good job of explaining? And if you just skipped from the beginning to now, uh, you missed out on a lot of interesting explanatory stuff if you're interested in learning. So maybe go back and watch it. But if you liked the video, make sure to like it. Um, if you want more stuff like this, then follow the channel. There's some other videos over there too. So uh, thanks for sticking around. I'll catch you guys later.